Okay, let's look at our sleep. Now, sleep is one of the most vital components that we need in place for most effective um, fat loss results. People that don't sleep have higher levels of cortisol, um, which feed back into all the other modules. People with chronically elevated cortisol have higher cravings, higher appetite, lower energy levels, and the list goes on. Um, you're basically pissing against the wind when trying to lose fat. In addition, people that don't sleep probably have been seen to have higher levels of appetite, higher levels of cravings, lower levels um, of fullness hormones when you eat, and lower levels of energy, motivation, self-control, etc., etc. Everything that we need in place, it's going to be the opposite when you're not sleeping properly. Really common for people to have a dysregulated cortisol curve, basically a dysregulated body clock. What's supposed to happen on a normal body clock is cortisol, your stress hormone, spikes in the morning, and then by the end of the day it goes down right before bed. And when it's lowest, melatonin, your sleep hormone, is high. And that's the thing that helps you get tired, go to sleep. However, in today's world, people suffer with chronic levels of cortisol, and that can impact on that body clock, and what can happen in the dysregulated body clock is that people have low levels of cortisol in the morning instead of high, so they can't wake up, they can't get out of bed, they literally can't function unless they get a coffee. And by the end of the day, instead of cortisol being at its lowest, cortisol is high, so it's the opposite. So you sit there, you're wired, but your body's tired and you can't go to sleep. And because cortisol's up here, melatonin is down here because they have an inverse relationship. So again, you're not producing those sleep hormones. Basically the opposite of the way it's supposed to be. So to get our body clock back on track, we first need to focus on decreasing the cortisol levels throughout the day. Look back to the other stress modules on how to do that, adding those zen type activities where we can throughout the day to bring that cortisol down. In addition, what we're trying to do is get cortisol low at night. Like we said, cortisol is supposed to be low at night, and melatonin is supposed to be high. Some ways to bring cortisol down in the evening are the same ways that will bring cortisol down during the day. Try to pick some. Um, it's hard after a stressful day, but you're trying to wind down, basically. I like to have an Epsom bath salt, if you can. Um, watch a comedy, read a book, guided meditation, talk to your partner, whatever you can do to lower that cortisol down. In addition, we're trying to stimulate our brain to produce melatonin. And one of the biggest ways to do this is through dark environment. So what we want to do before bed is try to create a dark environment around the house, turn, dim the lights, create as much of a dark environment as you can, get the candles out if you're old school. And one way that will stop your body and brain producing melatonin is blue light from laptops, from TVs, from phones. So what we're trying to do is um, limit the use of this technology before bed. If you really need to use your laptop, I recommend people get an app called Flux, F dot L-U-X, and you can get that on your laptop, get that on your phone, I'm pretty sure, and that takes the blue light from your screens so you can still look at it and your brain will still produce melatonin. If you want to go to the extreme level, you can also get um, these glasses that you wear before bed that will stop your eyes, your retinas absorbing this blue light and help you produce melatonin. Also in regards to light, when you're actually sleeping, it needs to be pitch black. They've seen, they did a study and they had someone sleep and then they I think they shone a laser just on the guy's foot and that was enough to wake him up. So we're, we're so sensitive to light because that regulates our body clock. So you can't have any lights from outside shining in, get blackout curtains, create a big back cave. There should be no light at all in there to really help you sleep properly. As we said, we want cortisol nice and low at night. So in addition to these stress reducing activities, try to leave the talk about bills and finances to the morning. Don't check your emails. Don't do anything else that can get your brain racing at night when you're trying to wind down. Ways which you may add in 
to bring stress down before bed is reading a book and meditating and um, having a bath as I said talk to your partner deep breathing and um, warm showers and you can also contrast that with some cold water hot cold therapy like I said can get your body into that rest and recovery zone if you're looking at supplements we can also supplement magnesium that really helps regulate the nervous system bring us back down start with around 500 milligrams of magnesium it's a pretty safe dosage for most people and stick with reputable brands such as Thorn, Biocycle, Eagle, any pharmaceutically tested ones. Another main sleep supplement that we can look at is melatonin, you just take it orally in a supplement form and it's going to produce the same effects in the brain and hopefully get that body clock if it's a bit off back on track and you can eventually get off that and keep sleeping. Safe dosage um, start with 0.5 milligrams half an hour before bed taking more doesn't mean you're gonna sleep better but if that doesn't work you can work up to between between three to five milligrams um, half an hour before bed it's a safe dosage it's not addictive and will help mimic the same effects as what it's supposed to do and most people use it just to get their circadian rhythm back on track and eventually wean off it because you can kind of build up a tolerance. But yeah, that's another main supplement. If unsure, talk to um, a practitioner again, ideally someone, a GP qualified in that kind of side of it, naturopathic GP, who's experienced with using these supplements. Another problem that we need to be aware of that can impact our sleep is in today's world that we're constantly stimulated all day, technology, information, overload. So it's been theorized that the way our brain is supposed to kind of work is that it's going to take information on, but that information is going to be followed by down periods that we're kind of daydreaming and are letting our conscious brain relax. That allows the subconscious brain to take all that information in and code it and sort it um, in all the different parts of our brain. In today's world, that it's go, go, go. We're on Facebook when we're um, relaxing, Instagram. Your brain's never getting a rest. The only downtime without a phone, without technology that we have, when we get into bed. And then we wonder why we lie in bed, wide awake. Our brain just on overload, try to process that whole day's information. Your brain's like a washing machine, just thinking about what you have to do tomorrow, thinking about what you have done today. Um, and we can probably all attest to this at some stage. So that feeds back again to the other modules that we need to focus on taking downtime during the day without your phone, without technology, without emails going off in a kind of daydreaming way where you're getting out in nature um, or you might be doing a hobby, doing some kind of zen activity, as I said, that will let that brain, that conscious part of your brain switch off um, and allow that subconscious brain go to work. So when you get to the end of the day, you're not gonna be suffering like this. Come for people to lie there wide awake, even when they've done all the stuff I've talked about, purely because they have stuff coming up that's on their mind um, in the days or following days, meetings, etc. If this is you, it could be a good idea to have a notepad beside your bed that if you wake up and something on your mind, simply write down, I'll deal with that tomorrow and a lot of times that work and be able to go back to sleep or fall asleep. When it comes to the bedroom, the bedroom is for two things only, sex and sleep. Don't fucking be one of these people that are eating in the bed. Ideally, don't get a TV in your room, it's pointless. Um, it's gonna sh sh uh, stuff up your sleep and have a whole range of negative effects for your health and fat loss. In regards to eating before bed, it's being seen, try to eat no more than two hours before bed because when you're asleep, your brain needs to, your brain and body have a whole range of processes they go through, killing all bad cells, etc. Um, it doesn't really want to be digesting food when you're asleep because that's going to take away from the immune system response and all the other regenerative stuff that's supposed to happen while you sleep. In regards to sleep apps, in case you ask, it's one of those things. Um, it can help, be helpful for some people, but just like golf and sex, as on Lacey says, it's two of the things that the more you think about, the worse you perform. You have a lie in bed and you're like, oh, 
fuck off. It's six hours to go to like to go sleep till I have to get up. Then it's five, and you're just stressing it out even more. So if it works for you, yes, but um, I don't recommend it for a lot of people. And lastly, in regards to the quality of sleep, it's not enough to be simply passing out and waking up. Ideally, there should be some dreams in there that indicates that REM, that really deep sleep. When we wake up, you want to be waking up refreshed, as I said. Use that as a sign that everything in your body clock is getting better. Common nightmares every night, they're a sign you're getting bad quality sleep and can be linked to stress levels and all the other stuff we talked about. So take all these tips on board. These are the main stuff um, that people need to put in because sleep is such an essential component. Part of your fat loss, people that sleep better have better metabolisms, better appetites, and um, better energy, better self-control, better motivation, drive, everything you need to be functioning properly, living a good quality life, and losing fat effectively. Another main sleep supplement that we can look at is melatonin. You just take it orally in a supplement form, and it's gonna produce the same effects in the brain and hopefully get that body clock if it's a bit off back on track and you can eventually get off that and keep sleeping. A safe dosage, um, start with 0.5 milligrams half an hour before bed. Taking more doesn't mean you're gonna sleep better, but if that doesn't work, you can work up to between between three to five milligrams um, half an hour before bed. It's a safe dosage, it's not addictive and will help mimic the same effects as what it's supposed to do. And most people use it just to get their circadian rhythm back on track and eventually wean off it because you can kind of build up a tolerance. But yeah, that's another main supplement. If unsure, talk to um, a practitioner again, ideally someone, a GP qualified in that kind of side of it, naturopathic GP, who's experienced with using these supplements.